Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on Network Devices Part 1. Today we're going to talk about hubs, bridges, and switches, then we'll move on to modems, and we'll conclude with routers. And with that, let's go ahead and begin today's session. And I'll begin with hubs, bridges, and switches. Before we begin with the actual devices, let's talk about the OSI model first. The Open System Interconnect model was developed as a way to help disparate computing systems, or networks, communicate with each other. It is composed of seven layers that work together in order for communication to occur. Now, network devices tend to fall within the first three of those layers. Layer one, the physical layer, deals with how bits are converted to the appropriate signal and placed onto the network. Layer two, the data link layer, is more concerned with making sure that the appropriate host is reached on the network. And finally, there's layer three, the network layer. Now this is all about making sure that the right network is reached. Now remember, network devices can usually be classified by where they fall in the OSI model. So now let's move on to hubs. The hub operates at layer one of the OSI model. It is only concerned with physically placing the signal onto the network. All devices that connect to the hub are in the same collision and broadcast domains. Now, collision domains are areas where network traffic can collide and cause problems on the network. Broadcast domains are network segments where broadcast traffic is heard by all devices on the networks. A hub functions as a concentrator or repeater in that it doesn't care where the signal comes from or where it is going. When a signal comes in, the hub propagates it out all of its ports. Because of this, a hub can only operate in half duplex. It can be sending data or receiving data, but it can't do both at the same time. All of the network bandwidth that the hub receives is shared by all of the devices connected to that hub. This sharing of the bandwidth effectively reduces the amount of bandwidth that is available to each device. As the size of the network increases, the performance of the network will be reduced. Now let's move on to the bridge. Now the bridge operates at layer two, the data link layer of the OSI model. Bridges connect different local area network segments together by creating a bridge between them, and they break up collision domains. So each side of the connection is its own collision domain. Now, bridges can also bridge different types of network media and different types of network transmissions. As in, you can have a bridge that goes between Ethernet and token ring, and or you can have wireless to Ethernet or wireless to token ring, so on and so forth. Bridges can do that. Bridges also have a limited amount of ports. Now, a special type of bridge is the wireless access point. It also operates at layer two of the OSI model. It's a specific type of network bridge that bridges wireless network segments with wired network segments. Now the wireless access point can only operate in half duplex mode, and it does so using a method called carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance, CSMACA. With CSMACA, devices will listen to the line. If there is no traffic on the line, the device is free to transmit. If there is traffic on the line, the device waits a random period of time and then listens in on the line again. While wireless access points do not break up collision domains, collisions are avoided by the use of CSMACA. Now let's move on to the switch. It also operates at layer two of the OSI model. It's similar to a hub, but it's also much smarter than a hub. It utilizes an application-specific integrated circuit, an ASIC chip. This ASIC chip has specific programming that allows the switch to learn what devices are on the network and which ports they are connected to. Because the switch knows which devices are on the segment and where they are located, they can operate in full duplex. Full duplex is when a device can send and receive signals at the same time. 
With full duplex, all of the devices receive all of the possible network bandwidth all of the time. They do not share the bandwidth as in the case of a hub. Now switches break up collision domains on each of their ports. So each port on a switch is its own collision domain. So there are no collisions in a switched network. But switches do not break up broadcast domains. All devices connected to a switch will receive network broadcasts. Now let's move on to modems. Now, the modem operates at layer one of the OSI model. The term modem is actually short for modulator demodulator. It was originally developed to take the digital signal coming from a computer and convert it to an analog signal, modulating the signal, to be placed on the wire. In return, it would accept an analog signal coming from the wire and convert it, demodulating the signal, to a digital signal that the node can understand. Modems were originally developed to create connections between network segments via the public switch telephone network, the PSTN, using the plain old telephone system, POTS. Cable modems can be used to connect network segments to the internet by translating the network signal into a format that can be handled by the cable network. Now a modem is not a router. It is a point-to-point -point technology and it doesn't care where the networks are. And with that, let's move on to our discussion about routers. So the router operates at layer three of the OSI model, the network layer. It is responsible for connecting different networks together. It uses special programming to keep track of different networks and the best possible paths to reach those networks. It's not concerned with what hosts are connected to those networks. They only care about individual networks. The routers are found at the edge of the network only makes sense since you don't want them in the center of your network since they're only concerned about finding networks. Like the bridge, they can connect different types of media together. As in, you can have an Ethernet signal coming in and have it transformed into a serial connection or Ethernet to fiber optics, so on and so forth. Now, routers do break up collision domains. Routers also break up broadcast domains because network broadcasts are for a specific single network, they cannot pass through a router's interface. So when a router receives a network broadcast, it just drops the broadcast. You could think of it as ignoring the broadcast. Why does it do this? Well, because broadcast traffic is only significant for the local network, not for remote networks. Now that concludes this session on Network Devices Part 1. We talked about hubs, bridges, and switches, and then I moved on to modems, and I concluded with a brief discussion on routers. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I look forward to doing another one.